Okay, I wanted to read some from the 2010 text by Ishimaru Jiro, whose name is here in kanji. It could be Jiro Ishimaru. I think it's Ishimaru Jiro. Uh, his assistant, uh, who's not listed here, but thanks to the Wall Street Journal, I learned uh, Che Jin Yi. Um, and their magazine, which they worked on jointly, I think from 2007 to 2010, uh, many of the results of which are in this text, uh, known as uh, Rim Jin Gang. So it's the name of the magazine. It's also the name of this text, which was talked a lot of talked about quite a lot in the latter part of 2010. Um, Che Jin Yi, the Korean, sort of one of the Korean brains behind this, uh, has since started her own magazine called Im Jin Gang. So these are names to keep an eye out for, but especially this uh, Ishimaru Jiro. I uh, wanted to share a couple of anecdotes, uh, two sections in particular from this text uh, that are worth reading. And the first is uh, an interview that Ishimaru Jiro did with a North Korean economic official uh, in May 2006. Uh, this is a big scoop of theirs. Uh, wonderfully illustrated text, by the way. Here's a picture of Ishimaru Jiro looking at a photo with a Korean uh, defector who showed him pictures of a dead factory in Suncheon. Another big scoop. And uh, so here's page uh, 24 from Im Jin Gang. Uh, interview subject Kim Yong Bin is a responsible executive official working at a state enterprise in North Korea. It took him three years um, to get around to being interviewed by these people. They'd been working hard on it. Uh, they'd heard about him from a defector who moved to South Korea. Um, this defector promised uh, Ishimaru Jiro that if he were to talk with Kim Yong Bin, he would get an inside look at the North Korean economy. Uh, the defector slipped word that Kay would visit China on business. They found him there and had a long interview. Later, uh, the authors say he agreed to be a freelance writer for uh, issues of Rim Jin Gang. Here we go. Talking about Chinese, uh, Chinese influence and the Chinese model. As history tells us, Kay goes on, North Korea, a country in the spheres of influence of superpowers, never recognized its responsibility for its own fate, and so it has never tried to run the country on its own. China has already entered and is positioned within our country's businesses in Zhang Mada markets, and South Korea is following close behind. Keep in mind this is 2006. The people in the conservative upper classes of our country are saying it this way. Although President Hu Jintao is applying direct pressure and telling North Korea to open up like China and create a free market. It seems he is not trying to engulf us by pursuing a policy of major power hegemony as in the days of Mao Zedong. Han chauvinism is a check. But my thought is that the government-induced instability in the 1990s was used by foreign countries. Even though China donated and built the Tehan China North Korea Goodwill Glass Factory, you can't say that there wasn't an international political strategy in action that advertised Chinese aid to the world. We can be sure that the North Korean leadership style in which the leader comes out in public to intervene in each and every problem has the effect of decreasing the state's authority. It is a style no longer used today by China. China is a major power. The fact that North Korea is building limited economic zones like the Kaesong Industrial Complex without making underlying reforms is something that probably doesn't really impress Beijing. China as a country is probably not really interested in the fact that there are many small Chinese businesses operating back and forth across the border. What the Chinese are aiming for are major power moves, like the complete purchase of the Musan iron mine. China today is working continually to get a deep grip on development related to long-term rights over North Korea's resources, including its fishing zones, forests, iron, coal, and harbors. In comparison, South Korea is clearly displaying the tendency to prioritize the usual South Korea processing industries, as in the case of the industrial complex. Even though they don't use the word reform, in reality, China and South Korea are already starting to divide up control over North Korea's economy. We can get a glimpse inside the movement toward reform in North Korea with the parts these two countries are pulling forward. Such is the result of the efforts by those in power with our country, in our country, to monopolize the contact with China and South Korea. If this were the start of the 20th century, such behavior would be condemned as treason. Ishimaru intervenes and asks, Unlike China, don't you think it would be hard to expect North Korea to succeed in the future without democratization? Kay continues, this is the age of information. 
I want to stress this one more time. We can't continue unless we immediately have freedom and opportunities to study and debate, at least in the field of economics. China was successful with reform after the Chinese were permitted to study economics freely. Our North Korea is wandering around in the darkest of ignorance, not knowing which direction the time, society, and outside world are moving. In order to fix this, we must first know about international relations well and change our foreign policy. To do that, we must begin to study and debate freely, starting with the cadre and intellectuals. But the conservative privileged class is doing nothing but issuing automatic orders to back up. Now all they do is wield the ideological weapon, that is to say the Juche idea, editorializes the, edit the interviewer, and tighten the noose around their necks. Even today, their tactic is to make arrangements based on convention. Arrangements such as a new economic zone will always be made beforehand, whenever it looks like there will be a certain degree of change in foreign relations. It is to make sure that only those holding the power with entrenched interests are able to monopolize all the benefits that come with any economic or cultural change. This is the political result of having a small, egotistical, dogmatic government. And don't think that through this process they're going to invest their profits for the benefit of the people as a whole. The wealth is all hidden deep underground, or is saved abroad. It is self-evident that if the leaders use the Juche idea as their weapon, economic management cannot improve. If they think that their ideological education has achieved success in indoctrinating the cadres, they should believe in the ideological healthiness of the cadres and make it possible for them to get in touch with foreign economic information and knowledge. If we want to develop North Korea's economy, we must have freedom to study and debate. If this can't be done, it means either there is no other method to control the cadres other than ideological indoctrination, indoctrination rather, or the state never trusted cadres like us in the first place. But wouldn't it be impossible for the cadres to break our back trying to protect a state that has no faith in it? If the state can't do it itself, then even with support from abroad, I want to have opportunities to study and debate as soon as possible. This is the best path to patriotism.